to make this film, we've come to one of the best places in the world for SIV flying, which is Olu Deniz in Turkey. Pilots fly from 6,000 feet on a 10 minute glide and end up over the sea with 4,000 feet. This is by no means a do-it-yourself SIV video. This is a film that is designed to help you recognize and recover the maneuvers that you may encounter during your cross-country paragliding flight. Wingovers are an excellent way to learn about the roll control of your glider. To do one, you just quite simply fly from full speed or normal speed, apply hard on one brake, let's say the right, and roll into it. The minute it starts to roll into it, then ease off the brakes, let it dive. Once you've got the dive, you've got the speed, you've got the control. Then apply left weight shift, left brake, and build up that bank. So then ease off at the top, let it dive, opposite weight shift, opposite brake, and you'll start to do really big, strong wing overs, keeping it nice and smooth. But remember, that as they get as really big, you've got to be careful that the glider doesn't deflate at the top when it gets light of pressure. So at that point, apply both brakes until you start to swing underneath. And as soon as you start to swing, then ease off the brakes, dive, increase the speed, and roll into the opposite side. <laughs>
big ears is a slightly milder form of descent, giving the pilot a little more maneuverability. In order to get into this maneuver, you simply reach up, grab the outside two A-lines on either side, pull them down vertically and firmly, one after the other. Once it's in, you hold the lines on. You can then use weight shift to give you directional control. You can also give the speed bar a little press in order to give yourself a bit more speed. In order to get out, you simply release the lines, pull down and pump firmly on the brakes until the glider is inflated. Let it surge forwards, regaining its balanced flight and getting back to normal. stall is a rapid form of descent. In order to get into it, you simply reach up, grab hold of the B risers, not the back risers, the B risers. Once you've got them, you pull down evenly until your arms are locked on. You'll feel yourself swing gently back underneath the glider. It'll then settle itself down into a stable B-line descent. You should be descending at this point at around 1,600 feet a minute. You can increase this by increasing the amount of B-lines you pull on by that you run the risk of more instability. In order to recover from a beeline stall, it's far easier to just let go of the bee risers, let the glider inflate, it dives forwards, very rarely more than 45 degrees above the horizon, so the glider doesn't deflate. If you pull slowly up on the bee risers, you run the risk of actually letting the glider go into a deep stall. If it goes into a deep stall and you feel the horizon going up and very little air in your face once you've fully recovered from the bees, then the only thing to do is you just gently pull on the brakes until you feel the pressure, then the glider gently rocks forwards and it comes out. Symmetric tuck isn't as bad as it looks. It's caused by the glider diving forwards and collapsing symmetrically along the leading edge. What actually happens then is the pilot swings underneath it, the angle of attack increases on the glider, the deflation comes straight out, you allow it to then dive once more, regaining its normal flight, and it'll fly off. If necessary, break it on the dive just to stop it deflating again but it's very rare that it happens twice. If you overcorrect on a symmetric tuck and you've got the collapse and you're sw starting to swing and you apply lots of brake at that point, then the glider can fall back into a stall. You don't want that. Just make sure when it collapses, you swing underneath it, allow it to reopen, check the dive and fly away.
This scenery is breathtaking, and flying over it is even better. But thermaling and soaring close to rocks like this is potentially very dangerous. So it seems like the perfect opportunity to talk about asymmetric tucks. With an asymmetric tuck, when you have half the wing go, it's important to just keep your course and then correct. So when it goes, pull on the opposite brake, opposite weight shift, get a safe course, and then pump out whatever's left. If it's a violent asymmetric collapse, and it swings you violently towards the collapse, then use the energy of that roll into the collapse to actually roll out violently as well, just like a wing over. That action of rolling it out, getting back on your course, normally gets most of the deflation out. Whatever you're left with, you can just pump out once you're back on a safe course. But remember, don't overreact. Just remember your course and correction. Although the stall seems to be a very severe manoeuvre, it is actually a manoeuvre that gets you out of situations which are far worse than the stall itself. Situations like cravats or twisted lines. Um, if you pull on a stall, you'll get out of the cravat very quickly and you'll be, recover it within 100 to 200 feet. So that is far better than actually winding round down in a cravat. Okay, so in order to get into a stall, properly and correctly, you apply the brakes, keep it coming down all the way until the glider eventually starts to drop back. When it starts to drop back, you must make sure that you lock your arms on. Don't bend them, because if you bend them, the force will probably bring your hands up like that and then you'll dive asymmetrically and have a, another cravat. So you don't want that. So you lock your arms right down, hold under the seat if possible, so you don't go anywhere, and then you just drop back. As you drop back, the glider falls backwards, then you fall backwards. It's a feeling of being pulled out of your chair. It's quite disconcerting and it very, it's very tempting to just go Ugh! and let go. If you do that, then you're buggered because the glider will just dive forwards and down and have a huge symmetric collapse and then you'll fall through it, it'll smack open and if it hasn't got a cravat, then you're right, but it probably will have. So you must make sure, never release it as it drops back. Hold on to it, let it drop you backwards hold on it then pulls forwards because the actual glider it's trying to fly but you're stalling you're pulling the tips back so if you're pulling the tips back it tries to fly but can't so it falls backwards again and then you stall again so it's doing this you're going forwards backwards forwards backwards now all you do is you fly along and you're holding the brakes and you look at it and when it goes forwards you release when you release it whoop, inflates itself and then dives forwards you just check that dive so that you then start to swing underneath. Once you're swinging underneath, ease up on the brakes and it flies off perfectly.
cravat is caused by the glider diving asymmetrically forwards and down. As it does so, and there's less and less pressure on the lower tip, the tip then falls in, flying to the center of the wing as you then fall past it. As that happens, and it flies into the center, the tip actually goes through A lines and B lines or whatever. Once it does that, once you then take up the slack as you roll out of the maneuver, it then wedges itself up and into the lines. Once that happens, and, you're, and it's amplified by your turning into it, that then increases the pressure, and the glider then just whips around into a spiral dive. There are two stages to getting a cravat out. The first, if you can stop it before it starts going into a spiral and get it back on its course by pulling on the opposite brake, settling it down on a safe course. It doesn't have to be a straight course because the glider is always pulling you to the cravatted side. And then go through a process of pumping the brakes to asymmetrically collapsing it like a big ears. You do it on both sides, that helps because it keeps you symmetrical. Then pumping it out just like a big ear, that's okay. If you can't get that out doing that, then you slow the glider down, it then mushes backwards, and just before the stall point, you'll see the tips coming out. If they then come out and it's okay, before the stall point, you ease off the brakes, let it gently dive forwards, and then see what you've got left. That's the first stage. That's the easy stage. You've nipped it in the bud. If it's bad, and it's cravatted, and whipped you around really fast, then the only option is to pull on the opposite brake really hard. Often, to use two hands is needed, so you pull away from the cravatted side, away from the spiral, and that often puts into a stall. You fall backwards quite violently, do not let your hands go. When it then surges forwards, you can then release the brakes, the glider in takes up the lines, it inflates itself and dives out of the manoeuvre. by the boat it seems quite appropriate to talk about parachute deployments. The parachute deployment isn't quite your second chance, it's pretty much your last. The way to get it out is quite easy. All you do is you reach your hand down, put your hands in the reserve loop, grip it, twist it and push it out so it's that movement. That then brings the outer bag out hanging on the handle, it then swings out a bit further, then you've got good momentum to swing your whole arm back and let go. You must make sure you let go. Many people have actually been so gripped with fear that they've put it back here and they've brought it back and whoop, they've still got it. So make sure you let it go and throw it away. Once you've thrown it away, it'll just keep going behind you and there'll be this reassuring tug of the parachute. Once it tugs you backwards, you'll swing underneath it. As you're swinging underneath it, the main chute will dive forwards because it's reacting against the parachute. As it's diving forwards, you've got to seize that moment, grab the front A-risers, collapse the main glider so it's no longer flying. As it passes you, it's best to grab hold of some material because that will stop it flying. It won't be bashing into the reserve 
and it will give you a nice smooth descent down. You must trust the reserve. The reserve will bring you down at less than five meters a second and it will, should show dampening tendencies all the time. So it will be quite smooth, providing you haven't got your mane hanging around. Once you're there in position, you've got the glider, everything's fine, you're just now descending neatly, you then adopt the parachute landing position and get ready for a landing. If you land in the water underneath your reserve, the most important thing to remember is once you've hit the water, try and get the reserve down quickly because it still flies. So you've got to get that down because it actually pulls you slightly underneath the water. So you want to get that down fast. Secondly, once everything's down, unclip the harness and swim away. Don't keep on hold of it just because it's valuable. Your life is far more important. So swim away and just wait for the rescue team to arrive. That was a simple and easy deployment. And even under that, all my feet are wrapped up in the lines. Imagine if you were in big waves and did that. You wouldn't have much of a chance. So make sure you don't get tangled in your lines. Cheers. In order to get into a spiral dive, you simply apply one brake and start going into a 360. You need to use weight shift, you need to get the bank rolling in. Uh, as it goes around the first 180 degrees, the glider will want to pull out. Just keep the brake on, keep it going around, keep gently squeezing on the brakes. As you get more bank out and more loading on the wing, it'll start to get faster. The wind noise in your face will actually get smoother and smoother and smoother as you go past that 180 degree climb out. Once you're then locked into a tight 360, the glider will be facing the horizon going round. If you just squeeze on a little more initiating brake, plus a little more of the outside brake, it'll eventually, the leading edge will eventually kadunk, face the ground, and you'll be then locked into a spiral dive. You'll be going round facing the ground, the world will actually be spinning around you. Okay, that's how to get in. How to get out is you just simply ease off the initiating brake, pull on the outside brake gently and the glider will immediately climb out. Let it climb out, just monitoring the brakes a little. Let it gently dive. As it dives, just a little bit of brake. But remember, as soon as you start to swing, ease off the brakes, let it fly away. If you're a bit too eager going into a spiral dive and you pull too hard when the glider is gently pitched back or you haven't got enough speed, then the glider can often enter a spin. If it starts to spin, you'll feel it because it's not a positive load round like a normal type 360 it actually you're actually twisting in your harness which is something completely alien to what you've been used to so if you feel that spin that negative whoop it goes round then ease up on the brakes let it dive break that dive pull out settle it down and start again There are two types of spin that you may encounter during your flying. The first is a flat spin, 
where, say, you're flying in a very weak thermal and you've got a lot of brake on and you apply one brake really hard. That'll make the glider twist on its yaw axis and enter a spin. If you feel this, you'll know the feeling because you actually just feel yourself twisting. Okay, it's not a usual feeling on a paraglider. If you feel that, you just put your hands up, let it dive, break the dive, settle it down, and let it fly out. Okay, so it's immediate. As soon as you feel you're spinning, hook, hands up, and pull out. Okay, the other one is when you're flying along, say, you're going towards someone, you whack on hard brake to avoid them. Now, a glider will go to 90 degrees and it'll still be all right. It'll still be in its balanced flight. You can still control it, okay? But if you hold it past that, the glider will start to go into a spin again. Now, as it spins, okay, if you feel the spin, again, you just release the brakes, check the dive as it's diving, break the dive, and pull yourself out of it. Um, but if it's gone right round, and it's behind you, because the glider actually flies along, you've applied full brake one side, and there's no brake the other. So one side's flying very fast, the other side's actually flying very slowly. So it's doing this and throwing you out. So the thing starts to do that and spins round, which feels very extreme. What you do is you make sure you release the brakes when the thing is facing the ground. When it's facing the ground, you'll be all right. When it's behind you, you won't be. So as it's going round, you hold on to that one, when it faces forwards, you release, and it pulls you straight out in a positive climb out. To summarize, here are a few key points to help you control your glider. The first is do not overreact. Most accidents are caused by pilots who overreact to problems that they can quite easily handle themselves. So don't overreact. The second is course correction. Use the energy of the roll to recover you from a big collapse. So if you're flying along and have a huge collapse on the right and you roll into it fast, then that energy of the roll as you start to swing gives you a lot of control because you have a lot of speed. So you pull on the opposite brake, roll out, back on your course, and that energy of the roll and back usually gets the deflation out. So it's course correction, okay? The third is use the pitch, break the dive. If it's diving around you, i.e. it's going very fast forwards, then you can break, break, break that as much as you like. The minute you start to swing underneath, hands up on the brakes and get it back to flying normally.
Terminal incorrectly and flying cross country for miles is the aim of most paraglider pilots. In order to make the most of the lift, it's important to use the energy of the paraglider, using the pitch and the roll. So if you enter a thermal and feel yourself being pitched backwards as you go up, allow that to happen and then you'll generally be pitched forwards. If it takes you to the right, then also allow this to happen. And as you swing under the wing, then increase the left brake, roll gracefully into the center of the thermal, which will be on the left side, keeping that angle of bank as smooth and efficient as possible, and then you'll make the most out of the core. I don't think it's necessary for all pilots to do an SIV course. However, by practicing these maneuvers in controlled environment, over water, and under the supervision of expert instruction, it will increase your understanding and trust in the wing, giving you more confidence in the air. In addition to this, it gives you a better feeling for the glider in pitch, yaw, and roll, thus enabling you to maximize the performance of both you and your wing in flight. 90% of incidents are caused by pilot error. So it's important to visualize yourself going through the maneuvers so that if they ever happen to you in flight and are needed, you'll be more comfortable with the situation and will be able to do the right thing at the right time and will not overreact. I think everybody has looked out the window of an aeroplane or a building of their office block or from a view from a mountain and wanted to actually walk on the clouds. With paragliding you can. You just inflate, run, check the glider and launch. And in moments you're part of this superb view. Well I hope this film has given you a better understanding of controlling the wing. It's best to watch the film again and again to allow the information to slowly sink in. The gliders used in this film were often flown outside their tested envelope in order to illustrate a point. They have all been tested and passed to be flown by pilots of their respective class. Paragliding is classed as a dangerous sport, but by increasing our knowledge in the glider and the conditions, it helps to keep the risk to a minimum. Remember, knowledge dispels fear. Pilots fly from 6,000 feet on a 10 minute glide all the way out to the sea to start their maneuvers at 4,000 feet. Left again, and action. This is by no means a training video. This, <laughs> of course it's a training video. <laughs>